Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Nigon here from the FX and IRA forums. And I'm going to be going over today uh, the newest creation out of Nigon's Electronics Creations. And that is the Igniter Config File Editor program. Um, I've alluded to this before. It took me a little longer to get it uh, finished up. Had some bugs I really wanted to get cleaned up and get it working well. Had some folks test it. But here it is, and it's ready to go for you now. Um, so as you can see, this is the editor. Uh, this is the main window when you start the program. Uh, now the program does come with an installer, and so I'm not going to go over that. It's very simple. The only thing to note is before you install this program, you do need .NET uh, version 4 installed on your computer. So make sure to download that from Microsoft first. So once you have the program installed, and then you uh, double-click the icon to get it running, and this is what you get. Um, and then what you can do is actually just go to open and find any uh, config file basically uh, for the igniter. So what I normally do is copy all my config files locally on my hard drive and then do the edits here and then at the end I'll copy everything back to my SD card. You could just edit directly on your SD card if you have it plugged in. Um, but I'm going to edit on my hard drive right now. So here's a, uh, a font I have basically. So let me just open this one. And now it's opening. And now it's open. And then this is the, the main window. So you can see down here in the bottom, these are your messages. Um, in case there's any errors with the file being opened or warnings, it'll be shown here. Most of the issues it finds, it will say like it fixed it automatically, which is really helpful because you can just kind of ignore this, but it's just for your information. Um, and uh, actually, I think I'll just go over what kind of things this does here uh, in case I don't get to show that later. But basically, this, um, as your file opens, it actually automatically checks the file for any inconsistency. So if you've named a variable incorrectly um, or just have some garbage in there, it will remove it. It will, if you have an incorrect value entered, it knows the variable, but the value is like incorrect or wrong. It will uh, basically put the default value back so that way at least you'll be getting something that works. Um, and then it also will scan your directory for all the wave files. And in case you've entered an incorrect number of files for each of the types, it will fix those, those numbers in the config for you. So that way you don't have to worry anymore. You just make sure all your wave files are dumped in there before you open this program and it will set up all those numbers for you automatically. Um, and I think these features, are a lot of uh, people have been having some trouble getting that right. And I know even I do in myself. So this is really helpful using this. It just automatically takes care of that. Uh, so then once you have it open and you've taken care of uh, all the messages, whoops, I slid that. Uh, once you've done that, then basically you've get, you got the GUI here. Um, and this GUI basically provides you mostly sliders. I have some drop downs. So like your number of fonts you can choose. Um, I have five on this one, so you just choose it. Um, this is also your, uh, you know, your, like your milliamp ratings. Like, you know, if I'm using a LED engine and with the true color, then I'll just go to a thousand here for all of these, something like that. Um, this crystal, you know, depending on what you're driving here, say I'll be driving one of these uh, motors. And so I've got it resistor properly, so I, I can run this at like 90%. That's fine. Um, and then you can see this true color add-on is for this gives you the milliamp. But in case you're not using true color, you just say you have all three motors, then you can just uncheck this and set your percent. That'll help you think about it. Um, there's also uh, this is just some general set, of course, settings. Uh, this one is really nice. This is like the, your blade effects. And what's really nice about this is um, if probably if you've noticed over here. Well, first I'll talk about this. This is kind of like the help file. Uh, automated help file so this as you click a setting like let's click max clash and it you know tells you what max clash is so this way like as you're clicking stuff it uh, lets you know what it does so that way you can see what it's doing but what's really the best thing about this program is this igniteulator which you can see up here and with this little picture of this little saber and what this does is uh, basically it allows you to run the blade effects and run the accent effects uh, so you can see what they're going to look like. Now, keep in mind, this is a simulator, so this computer does run a little bit differently than my chip does. So some of the speeds may be slightly off. Some of the blade colors may be slightly off. 
but it's a really good representation. So you won't have to take the card in and out hundreds of times, basically one to two times max, you should have pretty much what you want. So for instance, let's go ahead and, um, and you can actually do this real time. So as I click start, I can change these values. It's going to probably be slow because I'm recording now, but as you can see, um, so here I can like change my blade effects. Let's change this down and you should see the pulse. You see it gets way dark and way light. And if you put it back here, it should be, it should basically stay light. Yeah. But it doesn't really change much. So that gives you a really good sense of, uh, what all these effects do. I won't go through them all. I'll let you play with them. And we'll talk about how it's picking this color in a minute. Um, in fact, this is the color right now. So as you see, here's your colors, color one, color two. So maybe you want less of this. Let's see, that makes it more blue because this color one is my green. And then color two is red. So let's get that. And now we got some like purple color. So these, these will really help you pick your blade colors. Like as you're setting up per font, you know, you can use these sliders. Um, and then you also have the lockup, so you can click the lockup and see see which color it's doing, and that's controlled over here by this flash settings. So right now we've got them all on, which is why it's it's getting pretty much that whitish color. But let's say we want it more, uh, maybe we want it like yellowish. So we'd get rid of main is on blue, so we get rid of that, and then you'll see it's going to be more like yellowish. Okay, so we'll stop that for now. Then we can go to the accent settings. Uh, there's a night later for the accents too. So for each uh, accent mode, like you know, each like if it's pulse or what whatnot here, you can choose the you know the accent type and such. So let's say actually I only have six accent LEDs, kind of like that last build I just did. So you choose how many accent LEDs you have, um, and then you can choose the type. So that's on Night Rider. Let's go to blinking. Blinking is obviously the most fun you can do random stuff. Let's put some random values in here just for the fun of it. Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to type some random stuff real quick. 20, 20, 10, 0, 0. Okay, let's start that. So we can hit start and you see like a little uh, th pattern comes up and it shows you what pattern is going to run. Uh, it's pretty good. I think that it gives you a sense. Now, just keep in mind, you can change these real time. But for a couple of the modes like blinking and bar graph and such, um, to really get a sense of what it's doing, you're going to want to, uh, like after you've changed the values a little to kind of get a sense, you should really uh, like hit stop and then start again. And that will that way you can see how it starts. Otherwise, it kind of gets, it can get out of sync. Um, but otherwise, you can see you can actually change it in real time. That way you can get a sense of what's going on, what these settings do. You see if you make this long, you should see that, yeah, this LED... This fourth one basically will ne will pretty much never go off because this 10 is low. But now let's do this. Now it should blink really slowly. Yeah, see, on and then off again really slowly. And so that this way, this will really help you uh, pick these settings. So I'll stop that. Um, now let's go back to the uh, stop. It's a little slow. Keep in mind when you're when you're running that simulator, it's kind of a resource hog. So it, it does slow down your computer a bit. Um, now kind of one more last uh, feature. I kind of threw this in at the end because I didn't uh, want to assume that everyone's just going to do the RGB setup. Maybe people are going to do, uh, you know, more classic setups where you don't have the true color, or maybe you're going to do something wild and actually put like two dye off of one uh, true color board. Like maybe I mean, you could do two blues, but, you know, or I mean two greens if you're doing an RGGB or something two in series. Uh, but I gave you this options here. And that's the color setting. So by default, uh, this gives you uh, blue, green, red, which is my standard. So blue is always on this uh, main, uh, which is like the the color, you know, the color, oh, the LED negative. C1 is green and C2 is red. Uh, and then you have the crystal and the flash outputs. Um, so let's uh, try something different. Maybe we're gonna do maybe our main. We put the two uh, greens in series. And then maybe over here we have blue. And then maybe here we have red. And this is kind of a, um, actually probably by, let's, let's keep it, let's keep this blue. None. Uh, come on. How do I do it? None. There. And then this would be green. Now there's no there's no checking here. You could put this all green, like you could put three greens and one blue, even though you don't. There's no 
LED engine that makes that right now, but uh, that's up to you. So let's make these both green. So now uh, when you start this, you should see the, the color. It's hard to notice really with it, but you would see it being more uh, green. So we don't have much of this color, so let's take more of this color. So you see the blue is different. It's going to be more, you'll get more cyan colors right off the bat there. But then also, you know, if you don't have the true color board, so let's go to set it up for that. So if you don't have the true color board, say, and you have, maybe you did like the blue and green here in series, and then you've got nothing here and nothing here. You didn't use a true color. Then that'll give you show you which color you're using. Um, and that looks a little cyan. Oh, that's because I don't have it main all the way up. There we go. So that um, really can be helpful for any of you guys who are building with the true color and without the true color. And in fact, honestly, this uh, program will uh, probably work with other uh, any soundboard or any configuration you're using where you're going to just hook up a uh, multi die LED of all of any color to kind of give you an idea of, of uh, what colors you can get. So I think it's a pretty helpful program. Um, it definitely will help your customers that, you know, are having trouble with the igniter, getting the config settings right. This will uh, should really help you out. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and I hope that this really does help as much as I think it will. And uh, please leave me, you know, any comments or uh, any feedback on the forums. And I'll be trying to make this program perfect but right now it's ready to go for your use and hope that's you really enjoy it all right talk to you guys later bye bye mm.